Mr. President. Senator from Oklahoma. Mr. President, th this is a long-term issue. This is not something new. I'm, I'm amazed at the number of times that I run into people in Oklahoma and say, why can't we seem to get the budget done now? What's happened? And I've said, Let, let's back up for just a second. Since 1974, we've done a budget and done it correctly four times total. The Budget Act was created in 1974 right after Watergate to try to create this more transparent process. What they created was a process so incredibly difficult to work that it's worked four times since 1974. We've only had two years since 1974 that we haven't had a single CR. That's a continuing resolution. This body just passed another continuing resolution, meaning the appropriations process won't be done on time again this year, and that was settled today. The issues that we face with budgeting is not new. It's been 20 years since we've had no CR at all. This constant issue of putting the big budget issues off and trying to figure out how we're gonna navigate through the Senate procedures and get the budget done has to stop. And at some point, we have to have a determination to say, we can't just keep saying, next year this will improve. Next year this will improve. We're not gonna get a better product until we get a better process. And we have a very bad process right now, and we need to admit it's a bad process. What I'm proud of is that there are multiple members of this body, from the leadership of the Budget Committee through freshmen that are here, brand new senators, that are all focused on the same thing. Let's solve how we do budgeting and actually get to a better product by improving the process. Now, what do we have? Almost $20 trillion in debt, and everyone argues about what we're gonna do on a few things to try to do management, but no one's really talking about how do we actually get us back to balance and paying off the debt. It's a common conversation that I have with people in Oklahoma. This conversation with people that say, can we ever get this resolved? Is it too late? Americans believe on the whole, nothing will get better in Washington, D.C. dealing with the budget. And their question is, when and how does it get better? I wish I could give them a lot of hope on that. What I typically tell people, Mr. President, is that let's just do a for instance. Right now, let's say the budget, the balanced budget piece that we had, if we took the balanced budget piece that we put out earlier this year and actually took 10 years, chipped away at the deficit, and in 10 years chipped away at it and got back to a balance where we had no deficit that year, it was balanced. Then let's say the next year, we actually had a $50 billion surplus. It'd be a pretty good surplus. So we chip away in 10 years, get to balance, the next year we have a $50 billion surplus. Mr. President, do you know how long it would take us to pay off our debt if we had a $50 billion surplus? If we had a $50 billion surplus every year for 460 years in a row, we would pay off our debt. 460 years in a row of $50 billion surpluses and we can get on top of this. Everyone says that's unreasonable. And I would say it's certainly unreasonable if we don't change the way we do process. It just continues to get worse. There are some basic things we can do. We can do budgeting every two years. And people may say, well, how does that solve anything? That allows predictability and planning. It creates greater oversight. Right now, we, we do this every single year. And then the speed of what has to be done, how it has to be done, there's very little oversight on our spending. We can actually put all of the areas we have in spending all accountable every year. Right now, there's about 25% or so, 25 to 30% of our budget that we actually focus in on every year with the appropriations process. The rest of it's on autopilot. And it's never touched. Until we get everything in front of everybody every year to be able to look at it for oversight, we're not gonna solve the big issues. We've gotta deal with what's called budget gimmicks. I've been at war with a budget gimmick called the chimp. It's my favorite of the gimmicks. There are a lot of them out there. Changes in mandatory programs. Chimps. The changes in mandatory programs is a budget gimmick that's out there that says, we were planning to spend this much when we really weren't, but on paper it said we were. And then instead we said, no, we're not gonna spend that much this year, so we'll spend it on something else. But guess what? The next year they come back to the exact same dollars again and say, no, we're planning this year to do it, but we're really not, and so we'll spend it on something else. And it just adds debt every year. 
and we'll have billions of dollars in chimps built into our budget and claim that the deficit is even lower than it is. It's not. It's just this budget gimmick. And in real dollars, it makes it even bigger. We've got to deal with those budget gimmicks in there and to be able to take that away so that when the appropriations process is done, you get real numbers. The hardest thing to get in D.C. is the real number. So you've got to deal with all these gimmicks that are out there to remove those. You get with a longer time period to be able to plan, create some certainty. But one of the key things that we have to have is an actual deadline. This town doesn't function on anything other than deadlines and pressure points. And when it's time that it has to be resolved, we actually get it resolved. But if we don't have to resolve it right now, this town just says, tomorrow, we'll get it done next week. We'll get it done next session. So the focus is, how do we actually create those pressure points? So how about a simple idea? A simple idea that says, if we don't get the budget done on time, the appropriations bills done on time, then it goes to an automatic CR so we don't have a government shutdown because government shutdowns just waste money on the whole. So it automatically kicks in to last year's budget amount, but here's what changes. All of the members of Congress, our budget, our staff for how we function, our operating expenses, all of our committees, and the executive office of the White House. That's the three groups, both the House, the Senate, and the White House. All of our budgets drop immediately, let's say four, five, six percent the first day. And that does that for 30 days. And then if you still don't have the appropriations process, it cuts again, another big percentage. It puts the pressure where the pressure needs to be. It's not the fault of the agencies or the American people. The job wasn't done. It lies squarely in the House, the Senate, and the White House in our negotiations not getting it done on time. It's a simple mechanism to say, if the task has not been done, put the pressure where the pressure needs to be. The cuts in the House, in the Senate, and on the White House and push all of us to the table and get it resolved. The goal is to do appropriations in a transparent process so the American people can see how their money is being spent and to be able to do it wisely and to be able to create a process where you can actually solve the problem. Currently, we don't have a process that solves the problem. Now, this magically doesn't balance our budget. It still takes hard decisions, but at least creates a format where we could solve the problem. Right now, we don't even have that. So step one, like an AA group, let's at least admit there's a problem. There is a problem. Step two, let's get to work on fixing it and actually resolve the process, and then let's actually get to work balancing us and paying off our debt. Mr. President, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk about this. Thank you very much, Senator um, Lankford.